Hey guys! Today I want to illuminate the disadvantages of the concept of open-handed playing. Now you probably will find that odd because I myself am playing this way and in my tutorial I'm just talking about the advantages and positive aspects. But I'm also a scientist with passion. And in the sciences we always have to look not just for evidence that supports our own hypothesis but also for arguments against it. That way we can get well-founded results and based on that make good decisions. Because there are some uh, good reasons to always lead with your strong hand. In the following I want to explain those to you so that in the end you can decide yourself how you want to play. The biggest disadvantage if you play on a classic drum setup is of course that you have to learn every groove twice. Once leading with the left, once leading with the right hand. Granted, this is a very good exercise for your coordination and independence, but we abandon a certain specialization of our hands this way, which we have developed over the years. Violin players, for example, have a very high level of specialization in their hands and can do amazing things when they combine these different techniques. We drummers mainly lead with our strong hand on hi-hat, right cymbal, cowbell, for example, and the weaker hand is doing the backbeat and the ghost notes. I call this a division of labor. Each hand has its area of expertise and can bring it to perfection. If you play open-handed, each hand can never reach this level of expertise in one particular field because it has to learn both things. So maybe we don't have to train our hands evenly all the time. Number two. I consider the open body posture much more natural and I'm also feeling freer this way. But at a classic drum setup, the hi-hat is much too close for the left hand, so that one has to pull back one's elbow or turn the whole upper body, which again results in an unnatural or even unhealthy body posture. To avoid this, you either have to rearrange your pedals, which might result in an asymmetry in your feet, or you have to make use of different gadgets like for example a cable hi-hat. Number three. If you play a different setup, like many drummers do who play open-handed and are very used to it, then you are faced with another problem if you're sharing the backline at a gig. If someone else is providing the drum kit, you probably would have to adjust a lot so you can play well. And at a jam session, it is in most cases impossible to adjust something before you play. But if you are bringing the drum kit, the other drummers would have to adjust a lot so they can play well. Of course, even if you don't play open-handed, you are faced with the same problem if you play an unconventional setup. And by the way, I always support trying out new things. Number four. I often talk about the mental approach to open up oneself. But maybe it's possible, just speculating here, that we can play even more precise and in the pocket and are more locked in with ourselves if we sit in a more closed fashion. Just think about the multiple meanings of the word tight. Well, those were the main disadvantages that I see in this style of playing. Now I'm very curious what some other colleagues might have to say about this. Hey everybody, here's Patrick Metzger. I'm a German drummer and I changed to open-handed playing in the year 2004. So I'm a right-handed drummer and I played long time like that. And in 2004 I changed completely to this position. That means to lead all the grooves with the left hand on the hi-hat. And that was a big disadvantage for me in that time because I was not used to lead a long time and in a very fast tempo all the grooves with the left hand on the hi-hat. And also to keep it in time and on top with the bass drum with the right foot. That was a big disadvantage for me in that time. Hey folks, hey Andy, thank you for inviting me. Today we are talking about open-handed playing 
and uh, Andy asked me if this has any disadvantages. Well, I thought about it, but uh, honestly, I couldn't find anything serious. Whenever you come to a problem, you solve it by training or configuration. And uh, this being said, everything has its price. So you always have to find out what's best for you. And then if you practice, you'll get something. <laughs> Thank you so much. Only one thing to add, uh, because I'm a lefty, uh, for me personally, it's uh, sometimes a bit difficult because I'm oft also playing with the left foot naturally. Uh, the balance sometimes needs some adjustment, but that's, I think, a problem which is also a question of training. So, wish you all the best, take care and big up. Hello, Klaus Hessler my name. Um, welcome to this little video blog uh, for Andy Rode, which is uh, about open-handed playing and possibly you have heard my name in relation with that uh, issue from uh, maybe these books, Open Handed Volume 1 and, uh, and 2, which I like even better by the way, and also my DVD drumming Kairos. So all the three of them um, elaborate on the issue of open handed playing to, uh, to a very big extent. So the, the major question today is, does open handed playing also have certain say disadvantages, something that keeps you from playing certain things? Well, my personal answer would be no, mostly for the fact that uh, the open-handed position without the crossing of hands allows for certain things that you're not able to do in the crossed position. This does not say that this is bad and this is good. It's just a different, uh, say, concept of playing the drums. And uh, since you have less limitations with the open-handed position, there's obviously say, uh, more options to do certain things. Now, I'm cutting this long story short, but uh, there might be certain aspects that could turn out to be, uh, say, a disadvantage if you don't really watch out for certain, uh, say, additional options that you suddenly have. For instance, what you do with rim clicks, say you wanted to groove, uh, you, you wanted to play a certain groove like, like this, for instance, Playing my ring clicks in that say 8 o'clock a.m. position here, um, which makes it hard to kind of uh, bring in sounds from the tom toms because the tip of your stick is somewhere in a in a complete opposite corner of the of the drum set. But you could uh, you could turn this to be uh, an advantage in terms of uh, adding a new sound which was not there before, which could be this here. Trying out these different options that you suddenly have and allowing for the freedom that you have and uh, not getting stuck into what you used to play before is, uh, is the key thing here. So I hope you have fun experimenting with that stuff and uh, stay tuned for more stuff from me. There's more releases coming up and uh, check out the open-handed way of playing. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Well, those were some interesting points. Now I think that everyone should measure the advantages and disadvantages to decide for his or herself, depending on the situation, if he or she is using or not using this method. It always depends on the circumstances. In swing music, I find a specialization of the hands beneficial. In extreme metal music, I think that the hands should be more equal. You can see that we shouldn't either refuse or approve of a method in general. Everything has its advantages and disadvantages in different situations. And you shouldn't apply just one technique exclusively anyway. 
Now I'm very interested, as always, in your opinion on this topic. Just write it in the comments below. I want to thank Klaus, Patrick and Sven for their contributions to this video and I will see you in the next episode which will be about the difference between playing very difficult things and playing very musically. See you then.